Today is Wednesday, October the 25th, 2023. Welcome to the show. On the program today, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, he has some concerning words about the economy and the markets. We're going to look at what he had to say. The Bank of Canada has held rates as of for now, but doesn't rule out future hikes. We're going to update you on that announcement. Also, Bitcoin is on a bit of a tear. We're going to look at why that might be. We'll update you on the latest earnings reports. And finally, on today's show, 33 states have joined forces to sue Meta. Let's get started with today's news. Jamie Dimon, he is the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. And when he speaks, people just tend to pay attention. He had some pretty strong words yesterday when he spoke at a panel during the Future Investment Initiative Summit um, in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. His warning was focused on the dangers that central banks have of locking in a preconceived outlook for the economy. He highlighted the poor track records uh, of the central banks, like for example, the Federal Reserve. He said in his statement, Prepare for possibilities and probabilities, not calling one course of action, since I've never seen anyone call it. I want to point out the central banks 18 months ago were 100% dead wrong. He added, I would be quite cautious about what might happen next year. Now, Diamond, of course, is referencing the previous Fed comments about a year and a half ago or so, where he said, or they said rather, that inflation would be transitory in nature. And of course, we all know that that obviously with hindsight as our benefit isn't the case. Um, in his commentary, he basically discounted uh, the importance of whether the Fed would raise again uh, in 2023. In his opinion, the surge in interest rates that we've seen so far, he doesn't feel that an extra 25 points is actually even going to make a difference. Um, Diamond uh, is quite pessimistic these days. About a month ago, he warned that businesses should be prepared for interest rates as high as 7%. Uh, and as policymakers um, face these prospects of continued elevated inflation and slow growth, um, he was referencing the, the scenario where we would slip into what's known as stagflation. These latest comments also come on the heels of his recent dire commentary, seems to be a pile of it, where he said, this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. As expected, the Canadian Central Bank held its key overnight rate at 5% this morning, but it did note that it was open to more rate hikes as it tries to make sure that inflation doesn't really get away a on them. And it did mention that the overnight rate could stay above its 2% target for another two years. Uh, the bank now expects inflation to average around 3.5% for the next 12 months and then fall back to that 2% rate around the middle of 2025. Uh, the central bank also cut its 2023 growth forecasts of to 1.2%, and that is down from the 1.8% that it had predicted in July. Overall, the report from the central bank was a tad gloomy, uh, but I'd say also it's very realistic. Uh, we're currently seeing a combination of slower growth. We're seeing higher inflation rates, and obviously, um, this isn't the ideal atmosphere for businesses to operate in. In summary, the bank said in this report, Governing Council wants to see downward momentum in core inflation and continues to be focused on the balance between demand and supply in the economy, inflation expectations, wage growth, and corporate pricing behavior. Bitcoin, if you haven't noticed, has been on a bit of a tear for the past few days, recently passing uh, back up above the $35,000 level for the first time since May of last year. It's now up around 30% in the last couple of weeks. So the latest round of enthusiasm appears to stem from uh, the fact that a number of money managers, and we've, we've known this for a little while, have applied for cryptocurrency um, ETF. So that's not really new news. But the thought is that once these uh, funds do come online, it will legitimize the sector and it'll lead to stronger demand overall. The big difference this time around is that it was recently noticed that a listing for a BlackRock ETF or Bitcoin showed up on a list at the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, which is a clearinghouse for stocks and ETFs that is operated by uh, NASDAQ. The BlackRock application is still pending approval, but the listing did catch uh, attention of investors and it is seen um, as an indicator that the uh, approval is imminent. At this point though, the listing doesn't actually mean that a fund has been launched or approved, but it is seen to be part of BlackRock's preparations to actually launch a fund in the near future. It's human nature to kind of wonder how other people are invested. And if, if for any reason you've ever wondered how um, I would invest my portfolio, it's actually pretty easy to find out. Now, if you are a Blossom user, you can just look me up. My username on the platform is Mark B, so it's M-A-R-C-B. You can see my current holdings. You can see any recent trades that I've made, some logic behind the trades. Um, if you're not a Blossom user yet, you can download the app for free. You can set up an account. There you go. You look me up, you hit follow, and you're going to have your answer. 
there are a lot of earnings out this week. I'm going to report on a few of those right now. But before I do, I just want to throw out a question to, to you, our audience here. And um, earnings tend to be quite number data focused. And uh, I just want to make sure that um, it's something that you want me to spend time on here as I do these reports. So if you don't mind, just uh, leave a quick note down in the comments as to whether, yes, you appreciate the number oriented driven um, earnings reports or whether that's something you just uh, like me to skip over uh, in future editions. So I really would appreciate that. Leave a comment below. Uh, for today, at least though, I am going to cover some of the more relevant earnings that have come out over the past couple of days. CNR, Canadian National Railway, it reported its Q3 adjusted diluted earnings Tuesday. It reported earnings of $1.69 a share, and that's down significantly from the $2.13 that it uh, reported a year earlier. It also missed expectations, which were at $1.72 a share. Revenue was at $3.99 billion, again, down from the $4.51 billion it reported a year ago. Expected earnings were $4.05 billion. The company said that it continues to expect fiscal 2023 earnings to be a flat to slightly negative year over year, and it did retain its quarterly dividend of $0.79 cents a share. Microsoft also reported on Tuesday, and it reported Q1 2024 earnings of $2.99 per share. That's up from $2.35 a year earlier. Expected earnings there were $2.65, so it came out quite attractive that way. Revenue increased to $56.52 billion. That is again up from the $50.12 billion reported a year ago. Also exceeded expectations of $54.55 billion. Alphabet reported its Q3 earnings Tuesday as well. It reported $1.55 per diluted share. That is up from $1.06 a share a year earlier. It beat expectations of $1.45. Revenue for the quarter was $76.69 billion. Again, up from the $69.09 billion a year ago. And it also beat expectations of $75.75 billion. Coca-Cola reported its fiscal Q3 net income Tuesday of 74 cents per diluted share, and that is up from a reported 69 cents a share a year earlier. Net operating revenue from the quarter was $11.95 billion. That compares with $11.06 billion a year ago. The expectation was $11.42 billion, so they beat expectation there. The company also offered some guidance for 2023, and it says it now expects comparable earnings to grow between 7 and 8 percent, and that's up from the prior outlook of 5 to 6 percent. General Motors also reported its Q3 earnings on Tuesday, and it reported $2.28 per diluted share. That's up from $2.25 a year earlier. It also beat the street expectation of $1.84. Revenue from the quarter was $44.13 billion, up from $41.89 billion a year ago. And it also beat expectations of $43.25 billion. Now this morning, Boeing reported a Q3 loss of $3.26 per diluted share. And that compares with $6.18 a year earlier. Um, analysts had expected a normalized per share loss of $2.61, so you could say this was a disappointing number there. Revenue from the quarter was $18.1 billion. That compares with $15.96 billion a year ago, but does come under the street expectations of $18.3 billion. In this report, uh, Boeing reaffirmed its full year 2023 operating cash flow guidance of $4.5 billion to $6.5 billion, and it reaffirmed its cash flow outlook of $3 billion to $5 billion. 33 states yesterday, led by Colorado and California, they filed a joint lawsuit against Meta. And in the lawsuit, they say that uh, the company violated consumer protection laws that uh, unfairly deceived users, they say, uh, particularly children, uh, about the safety of its platforms. Uh, Meta, of course, operates Facebook, it operates Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, and Messenger. In the complaint, the lawsuit alleges that the company, quote, designed psychologically manipulative product features to induce young users compulsive and extended use. Uh, the suit also alleges that the algorithms that were designed by the companies pushed children and teenagers down into what they call uh, rabbit holes of toxic and harmful content. It's alleged also that Meta had designed psychologically manipulative product features that would induce uh, young users to, you know, what they're sort of referring to as compulsive and extended use. Now, it seems here that the sheer fact that so many of these states have come together to sue Meta, uh, it's a real strong uh, show of force, and it shows that they're prioritizing, or at least attempting to prioritize, the issue of children and online safety. And it is somewhat reminiscent of previously filed cases against, you know, the big tobacco companies or big pharma companies. 
Um, it does seem like it's been forever that the regulators have been trying to hold social media companies accountable. It sure seems to me like it's a losing battle. And sadly, uh, I'm not sure that these most this latest round uh, of charges will actually change anything. Coming up for the balance of this week, tomorrow we have the European Central Bank interest rate decision. I'll be watching that. We also have earnings from Newmont. We have UPS, uh, Merck, MasterCard, Ford, and Amazon will also report tomorrow. And then on Friday, we have earnings from uh, Fortis. We have Exxon, Chevron, Imperial Oil, so a lot coming from the energy patch there. And also Colgate Palmolive reports on Friday. So um, I do this uh, update every Monday, every Wednesday. I will be back on Monday. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and take a moment to do that now. Make sure you don't miss any of the uh, trending news. Um, as always, I will put a link for our Investing Academy in the description of this video, and we'll see you in a few days.